Come on, let's go. It's summer school time. Good morning, good morning, good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. I am delighted that you have decided to come back and worship with us on this Sabbath. Yes, every Sabbath, we are here waiting to worship with you. And I'm glad, I am very glad. Yes, why? Because it's Sabbath, yes. And this is a Sabbath we should be rejoicing in it and just knowing that the Lord is going to be with us as we do our children's program. To begin, we're going to have our welcome, and our welcome will be done by David Morgan, and David Morgan attends the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. And after that, we'll have our opening prayer, and our opening prayer will be done by Diamond Smichael, and Diamond attends the Waterford Seventh-day Adventist Church. Welcome boys and girls to another Sabbath school. I hope God blesses you richly today. Welcome. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the mommies and daddies. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine. Thank you for all the kids. And thank you for making us live another day. Thank you for all all the stuff you have given us, the roof over our head, clothes to wear, everything. Thank you for the sunshine and the rain, I pray. Amen. Hello boys and girls, welcome to yet another episode of What's Inside Aunt Simone's Fruit and Vegetable Basket. Now last week I didn't have anything for you, but this week I have two things and I'm sure you'll identify at least one of them. The first one is a root vegetable. Yes, and you know what? I'm starting to like it. Yes, I am. Now we have a fruit. And I am not sure most of you are going to identify this, but maybe some of the people here in Jamaica will. Now, boys and girls, just remember that you have to eat your fruits and your veggies so that you can stay healthy and strong. God gave us all these things for us to keep our bodies in the right working order. All right, well, have a wonderful Sabbath, and I look forward to seeing you back here on yet another episode of What's Inside Aunt Simone's Fruit and Vegetable Basket. Bye-bye. Yes, 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 it is our sing-along time, and that is the time when I, I'm just ready to sing, I'm ready to clap, and if I could play my guitar, which I've been trying to play for the longest, I would be playing my guitar. Well, our first song, yes, our first song will be coming to us from sisters. Yes, and I believe they're sisters. That is Ciara and Sarah Anderson. And they both attend the Duxies Seventh-day Adventist Church. Holy name. 
the sun comes up, it's a new day, darling. It's time to sing your songs again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I worship His holy name. Sing I never before, oh my soul. I worship His holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the lord of my soul oh my soul i worship his holy All right, thank you, Sierra and Sarah, for your song. It was beautiful. Now we're going to have song number two, and song number two will be done by Ernika, who have been who was on our program last Sabbath. So Ernika Patterson, and I believe it's her brother Doran Patterson. Yes, and they attend the Tri City SDA Church in the USA. All right, go ahead. My name is Anika Patterson. I am eight years old. Good day, everyone. My name is Ernie Patterson. I'm six years old. And we are from the Tri City SDA Church. Our song is entitled God's Love is So Wonderful. God's mm. Love is so wonderful. God's Love is so wonderful. God's
thank you Ernika and Doran for your song and now we're going to go to song number three listen it's like we have sisters and brothers on our program today like we did the other day now today we're going to have Jada and Kizia Thomas yes and they are coming from another island in the Caribbean and they are coming from Antigua or is it Antigua forgive Auntie Simone Antigua I believe it is and they attend the Old Road Seventh-day Adventist Church please take a listen as these Little princess, sing their song.
All right, boys and girls, now we transition into the Sabbath School lesson section of our program. This morning, we're going to start out with the kindergarten class, and then we move on to the primary. As you know, our lessons will be narrated by Auntie Franita Buddy Fullwood, and she is ready, ready to go. So I want you to get your Bible, get your Sabbath School lesson, and listen to Auntie Franita as she does the Sabbath School lesson. After that, we will have the junior Sabbath School lesson, and that will be done, or yeah, that'll be done by Marche Lowndes. Marche attends the Palm Seventh-day Adventist Church. Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called Jesus' Get Well Party. Today's memory verse is from Matthew chapter 25, verse 36. It says, I was sick, and you looked after me. The message for today's story says we serve God when we help sick people. Have you ever had a high fever? Do you remember what it felt like to be hot and sick? Well, a long time ago, Jesus helped someone with a high fever. Jesus was so tired. He had spent a very busy day teaching the people, and he was ready for some rest. Peter was one of Jesus' special helpers, and his home was nearby. So Jesus went to Peter's house to rest. He thought he might take a short nap. But there was one problem at Peter's house. The mother of Peter's wife was sick. She had a very high fever, and there was no medicine to make her well. Peter's family was very, very worried about her. I'll ask Jesus to help her, Peter decided, and that's what he did. Peter told Jesus about his wife's mother and the terrible fever that wouldn't go away. He really wanted Jesus to help her. So quietly, Jesus went with Peter into the room where the sick woman rested. She was so sick. She was even too sick to get up and take care of her family. Jesus smiled kindly at her. Then he quietly bent over the woman and told the fever to leave. And you know what? It did. And right away, she got up and fixed food for Jesus and his helpers. Now that was big news. Someone visiting Peter could heal the sick? Well, someone told a neighbor who told someone else and who told someone else. And soon people all over town knew that Jesus had healed Peter's mother-in-law. And you know what? Before long, people were lining up at Peter's house. Some were very sick themselves. Others brought friends or loved ones who were sick. Some were able to walk on their own, but others had to be carried by friends. But on and on they came, and it seemed like the line would never end. Jesus loved every one of them. It made him sad to see so many suffering people. He wanted them all to be well. So, hour after hour, late, late into the night, he healed them. Not until the last person who came was well did Jesus stop for rest. Oh, what a long and exciting day it had been, and Jesus was still tired, but he was happy. He was happy that he had been able to help so many sick people. Jesus wants you to help people who are sick too. What can you do? Well, you can smile, you can sing a happy song, or you can give them a drink of cool water. But most of all, you can pray and ask Jesus to help them get well. Jesus will always hear your prayer. This podcast was brought to you by gracelink.net and Studio El Piso. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called, Who Cheated? The memory verse is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 
verse four. It says, "Love is patient. Love is kind." Today's message is God helps us serve others faithfully and patiently. Have you ever worked hard and long for someone you love? Maybe it was helping your dad stack wood or repair the house, or maybe you helped your mom in the garden all day. You were glad when it was over, but because you loved that person, it was worth it. Jacob had been at Laban's house for a month. One day, Laban said, "Jacob, you are my relative." It doesn't seem right for you to keep working for me without pay. Tell me, what wages would you like? Jacob was glad to be at his uncle's house. He didn't mind the work, and he also had been admiring Uncle Laban's youngest daughter, Rachel. Uncle Laban, what I would really like is to marry Rachel. I will work seven years for you. If you will let Rachel become my wife, Laban agreed. That sounds like a fine arrangement to me. Yes, stay here and work for me. In those days, a man gave money to the father of the woman he wanted to marry. After the wedding, the father was to give the money to his daughter. It became her own to keep. Some men didn't have money for the bride price or dowry, as it was called. So, if the father agreed, the man could work for him for a certain amount of time, and that's what Jacob had to do. So Jacob began seven years of work to make Rachel his wife. Day after day, he faithfully and patiently did all that Laban asked. And the time seemed to pass quickly because of his love for Rachel. Finally, the seven years were up. It was time to make Rachel his bride. But Laban was not honest or fair with Jacob. He liked having Jacob work without pay. He knew that Jacob worked hard without complaining. It was clear that God was helping Jacob to become a faithful worker, and he didn't cost Laban anything. So Laban decided to do something very wrong. He would trick Jacob to get more free labor from him. In those days, the bride wore a heavy veil during the wedding celebration. No one was to see her face. That night, Jacob took his veiled bride to his tent. He couldn't see that it was Leah, not Rachel. In the morning, Jacob made a terrible discovery. He had married the wrong sister. He was shocked and angry. How could his uncle have done such a thing? Uncle Laban, why have you done this? Jacob asked. I worked hard for you so I could marry Rachel. Why did you trick me? It is our custom, Laban lied, for the older sister to marry before the younger. But I'll make a bargain with you. You may also marry Rachel if you work for me for another seven years. In those days, in that country, many men had more than one wife. So at the end of the week of Leah's wedding celebration, Jacob and Rachel were also married. Then Jacob began to work seven more years for Laban. Jacob worked without pay for fourteen years, a long time, to marry Rachel. Patiently he served Laban all that time. He truly believed that having Rachel for his wife was worth it, and God helped him to serve faithfully, even when the work was hard. When we really love someone, we will serve faithfully and with patience too. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Frenita Buddy Fullwood for GraceLink.net. 
Animation and artwork by Giorgio Godoy. Audio is post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. My name is Marcia Lones, and I will be doing the junior's lesson today. The topic of the lesson we looked at this week is Death by Deception. The poet text is taken from Proverbs 12, verses 22, and it says, The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights those who are trustworthy. It was springtime, a time when kings went off to war. Israel was at war with the Ammonites. While the army commander Joab and all the forces were laying siege to a city, King David returned to Jerusalem. Imagine that the king left his army and returned home to comfort. One evening, David couldn't sleep. So he got up and walked around on the palace roof. He saw a beautiful woman. He fell in love with her that very moment. King David found out that her name was Bathsheba and that she was the wife of Uriah, one of his bravest and most faithful soldiers. However, this didn't stop David. He sent messengers to get her. That was a bad choice. Before long, Bathsheba sent a message to David. Guess what? She was pregnant. David was in trouble. He knew he had done wrong. The law said that a convicted adulterer should be put to death. David decided that the only way to get out of the trouble trouble was to bring Uriah back from the battle so that he could spend some nights with his wife. What a conspiracy! Oh, what a tangled web King David was weaving! When Uriah arrived at the palace, David pretended he wants a special report on the war. David then encouraged Uriah to go home. But Uriah didn't go home. He stayed outside the palace with the servants and palace guards. When David found out that Uriah didn't go home, he came up with another plan. And so the web of deception was being weaved again. David invited Uriah to eat at the palace. During the meal, Uriah got drunk. But he didn't go home. David's plans had failed again. Will he give up now? No, he didn't. In the morning, David wrote a message to Joab and sent it to the camp with Uriah. The message said, Put Uriah out in front where, where he would be struck down and die. Joab did exactly as he was told, and Uriah was killed. David thought he had covered up his sins, but God knew. We can't cover up a wrong we did. It is better if we confess and ask for forgiveness. Boys and girls, please remember to study your Sabbath school lesson. Yes, study your Sabbath school lesson during the week. If you don't get to do it every day, at least on Friday evening after your family worship, you can take the time to go through your Sabbath school lesson so that you'll be prepared and ready to go through the lesson with Auntie Frenita and also with whomever does the lesson review for the juniors. Now, I am happy. Now, I didn't know that this next person who will be singing for us could sing and that they had 
yet another talent. Yes. And so we are now going to hear from Daniel Greenland. Daniel has done the Sabbath School lesson review for us before. And so Daniel Greenland will be singing song number four for us. And he attends the Cheesefield Seventh-day Adventist Church. Go ahead, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. That was awesome. Boys and girls, yes, we've come to the end of our program. And as always, Auntie Simone is mm, not happy, but we have to end our program, right? Now, our closing prayer will be done by two little boys. Yes, one will be done by, the closing prayer will be done by Nathaniel Sales, excuse me, and he attends the Trenchtown Seventh-day Adventist Church after that, we'll have our goodbye, and our goodbye will be done by Tyreek Thomas. He also attends the Trenchtown Seventh-day Adventist Church. Go ahead, boys. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's have a good their most righteous father, we thank you for today. Thank you for giving us another day. Please keep us safe from the enemy. And please help us to know that you are God and you can do anything. Please bless this worship. Please protect us from all harm and every danger the enemy has planned. In your name, in Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Bye-bye, boys and girls. I hope you enjoy the summer school program. See you next week. Bye. All right. Did you all enjoy today's program? I did, and I was blessed, blessed beyond measures, and I hope that you were blessed too. Now, as you know, that we have to take the time, and we have to take this time and just pause and tell God thank you for allowing us to get through our program and that the children were able to participate. All right, boys and girls. Now, I know that not only children are watching this program. Yes, I heard the adults are watching and they're enjoying it. Now, I hope there are more children watching than there are adults, right? Yes. Now, I'm asking everyone to please pray for our boys and girls as they witness for Jesus each Sabbath. Yes, your prayers are needed, really needed. We are living in some, you know, not so certain times. We have some problems going on all around the world, but we want our children to know that God loves them, that Jesus loves them, and they have nothing to fear. 
Um, yes, they'll feel away. Yes, they'll feel scared at times, but they need to know that Jesus is with them and that someone is praying for them. Now I'm going to ask you to bear with me just a little bit longer as we tell those who participated in the program a great big thank you. So pay attention and continue to pray for our children. All right, please, please remember to share our program with everyone that you know, right? And we ask you for your continued prayers, or con your continued support for our program. Now, I want you to remember to subscribe. Yes, subscribe wherever the, you know, the subscribe button is. Just click on that and if it's your first time. And if you've been watching and you forgot to click on it, then please go ahead and click on it. We also want to hear from you. Please give us your likes here on YouTube and also on Facebook. If you're watching us in two places, please go ahead and give us the likes. And after that, I want you to, again, turn around, hit the button for sharing, and let everyone know about our Sabbath School program. Boys and girls, bigger boys and girls, Aunt Simone had a wonderful time with you today, and I pray that you'll come back again next Sabbath. Hey, bring along a friend with you so that they too can enjoy what you are enjoying. I look forward to seeing you, and God bless. Make it a wonderful Sabbath day. All right, bye.